Hello there and welcome back to the channel. So you're thinking about relocating here to Thailand. Well, let me give you some things to consider. Now, there's plenty of positive things. I could spend hours and hours telling you about all the positive things, but I'm going to give you some things to consider so when you get here, you'll be prepared for it. Just keep in mind when you first arrive, you're going to have to get used to a lot of things. And the main thing here is you're going to be away from your friends and your family. You need to be mentally prepared for that. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking, good, I'm glad to get away from my family and friends. But for the others that really enjoy their family and friends, you really want to get mentally prepared for that. And you definitely want to stay in contact with them. You know, let them know how you're doing, do video chats, whatever it takes. Because I've had conversations with a lot of people through this channel who have moved here and they feel like, I don't know if I did the right thing. Uh, nothing feels right. It won't just get prepared for that. And one of the main things is people missing their family and friends right from the get go. Another thing that you're going to find out as soon as you land is there is a huge language barrier and miscommunication is key. It happens every day. As a matter of fact, I just went to a printing place to get some shirts printed out and I had to spend a long time there because there was a lot of miscommunication and I'm learning Thai language and there's still a lot of miscommunication. So just be aware that this is going to be a daily occurrence. I would suggest learning the language when you're here. Uh, there's, if you need a visa, you know, you can try an ED visa and use language as a way to learn. It will help you in your transition here in Thailand. Now driving can be a challenge. At first, a lot of people that I have heard of and met don't want to drive. They get here and they're like, I'm not going to drive. I'm going to take uh, it's like Uber, but it's called Grab or Bolt or one of those apps. I'm going to use that while I'm here. That will get old quick, especially when you're waiting on one of the rides to come get you and they just cancel it after you've been waiting 15 minutes and you got to start the process all over again. So be, it just depends where you live. Be prepared to have to drive. Obviously, if you live in somewhere like Bangkok, they do have an infrastructure with trains, buses, and cabs everywhere. May make your life a little bit easier. I'm in Chiang Mai, which is up north. Things are not like that here. You're probably going to need to drive if you're going to live here. So with that in mind, just know that driving here is a challenge. This is one of the most dangerous places in the world for driving. Motorcycles are everywhere. A lot of the rules of the road, let's just say they're not really adhered to. Every day you're going to have a, uh, something to talk about uh, with the traffic, just crazy things you'll see but you'll get used to it after a while. But here's what I would suggest for you when you move here is don't drive. Spend a little while taking the taxis, the Ubers, the grabs, whatever they have here for you. I don't think they have Uber, but grab or bolt or something like that. And pay attention, watch to how the roads work. Watch how the drivers, the one that live, the people that live here, the cab drivers, watch how they handle the navigation through the roads. Use that as a learning curve for you to get your mind set on driving here in Thailand. And for all you US people, they drive on the opposite side of the road than you're used to. Another thing you're going to have to get used to here and you might want to consider is the weather. So if you're looking for hot weather year round, well, this is it. But there are some other weird weather things that happen. Matter of fact, we're just getting out of one right now. Main one being smoky season. There is a smoky season. It starts sometime in the time of February. This year it started in January, but most of the time it starts in February and lasts till the end of April. So if you have asthma or some other respiratory issues, the north of Thailand, Bangkok, those places may not be for you. As a matter of fact, the only places in Thailand that really don't have much of an issue with this would be like the islands like Koh Samui or even Phuket. They don't have as much of a problem with this whatsoever because they're surrounded by the ocean and all the air from the sea. But just be aware that the smoky season is here and it, just think you can, if you wanted to live, let's say in Chiang Mai where I'm at right now, maybe you live here and you rent and then when the smoky season starts to get bad, maybe you spend a couple of months down in the islands. So that wouldn't be a terrible thing or even use this as an opportunity to go back to the country you're originally from and visit those friends and family that you're starting to miss. Now, the other weather issues that you'll have here is there's a rainy season. 
and you get into that uh, usually July, but maybe even June, but June, July, August, September, and then it starts getting better in the middle of October. So the rainy season doesn't necessarily mean it rains every day. It means that's where there's going to be a high probability of rain. And yes, sometimes the rain can be awful. So just keep that in mind. And if all your transportation is here in Thailand as a motorcycle, that could be an issue for you when you want to go places and it's pouring rain and you just don't feel like getting soaking wet every time you have to go somewhere. And if you're wondering when the best time is weather-wise to be in Thailand, I'm going to tell you November through January. Why? Well, it's not too rainy, but it does rain a little bit. It's not too hot. It's actually the coolest months of the year. That is the time, if you're going to be here for a short duration, that is the time to be here. Now, Thailand also has the hot season, which is what I'm in right now. So you're probably thinking, well, hey, stupid, why are you wearing a long sleeve shirt? Well, this is super thin made by Under Armour and it's actually made for warm weather. And I'm actually feeling pretty cool because I'm used to the weather somewhat by at this point. I've been here two years. But anyway, the hot season is going to be April and May are going to be some of the hottest months here where it gets really, really insanely hot with very little wind and it's dry right now. Right now it's the end of April and it is excruciatingly hot. Another thing to consider when moving here, if you're terrified of dogs, Thailand may not be the place for you. There are what they call soy dogs, street dogs that are everywhere. And for the most part, they're all very friendly. However, some can be territorial. And if you're walking on some back road and they don't like you there, they may growl at you, bark at you. I'm sure there's some instances of where they've bitten people. I have not in the last two years had any instance like that whatsoever. The only time I've had an issue with, with the dog was dry, riding a bicycle at night on a back road and the dogs just chased me and that was about it. But other than that, so just get, you're gonna have to get used to street dogs. Now, if you're saying, what about if I bring my dog or cat? Well, we have two dogs and I walk my dog every night. And yes, soy dogs do come around. I have had zero issues with them. And if there, it looked like there could have been an issue when I first moved here, I thought there was gonna be issues. Well, my dogs are so little, I just pick them up. But other than that, there has been no issues whatsoever with the street dogs. But I want you to make sure you're aware of this because obviously dogs vary from their temperament and it depends again, like maybe where you're at in Thailand. I know in some parts of Thailand, it's not the, the uh, dogs you have to worry about. It's the street monkeys. Now, another thing to consider moving here, if you don't like spicy food, Thailand might be a little difficult for you. There is a lot of spicy food here in Thailand. And when they say spicy, it ain't spicy, it's Thai spicy, which means it's really hot. So if you're not a big fan of spicy, you can always ask for it to be less spicy, but sometimes even that is just a little spicy. Another thing to consider is not knowing where to go or what to do. I would say whatever area of Thailand you're planning on going, research it real well and plug in, meaning go somewhere where there's gonna be other foreigners, you know, find a place that's a hangout for other foreigners here, plug in with them and use their knowledge to find out, you know, I like to do this. I, let's say you're into archery. Oh, they got this over here. Or I like to ride mountain bikes or road bikes or whatever the sport is that you like golfing and try to get plugged in and have somebody who's lived here for a while get you where you need to go so you can meet more people that like the same things you do and you can start establishing your life here with new friends as quickly as possible. Now, another thing to consider when moving to Thailand is Thailand is not very friendly when it comes to visas. There's constantly a visa struggle. It's gonna depend on what kind of visa you can even get. There's so many kind of different visas. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna have a video coming up next week about visas with one of the visa experts. So visas can be quite complicated here. You're gonna to need to figure out which one works for you. And there are check-ins on some visas. Um, even the one I'm on, I have to go every 90 days for a visa check-in. You can either use a visa service that makes your life a little bit easier, but you're gonna to have to pay more money or you can go to immigration and do all this stuff yourself. But my point here is, it's not you come here and you get a visa and you're good for three or four years. It does not work that way here. Now this one may sound stupid, but it is such a reality. It could be a challenge to live here if you're left-handed. Let me explain. So here in Thailand, when you hand something to someone with your left hand, 
it's kind of an insult. Well, it is an insult. So you always hand things to people with your right hand. Plate of food, hand with your right hand. Handing them money, use your right hand. So for all you left-handed people, this may be a challenge. So before you move here, you may want to practice doing a lot more things with your right hand, such as transactions with other people, you know, and then some other things, little tidbits here. When you, you don't point at people like that, you point like this. And if you want somebody to come here, you don't go like this, you go like this. Little things you'll have to get used to. Another thing you might want to consider, if you're a high-strung American, yeah, I'm talking to you, kind of like I am, here in Thailand, there may be a challenge for you. Now, yes, I know there's high-strung people in Europe, but in particular, I'm speaking to the ones more like myself. In America, I know we can be a lot, very high-strung. We like things done on time, a certain way, and that's just the way we do things. That's not the way they necessarily do things here in Thailand. You're going to have to breathe and get used to it because it has been a challenge for me when somebody says okay we will see you tomorrow at 12 i will be there tomorrow at 11 50 ready to go or even 12 o'clock ready to go and then my appointment may not start right on time now there has been the other extreme where let's say they're going to make a delivery to the house and they go yes we will deliver between 12 and 1 o'clock and they show up at 10 a.m so it works a little bit both ways so just know here you're going to have to calm it down a little bit, which is hopefully a reason you're moving here to Thailand anyway. They have more of what you call a sabai sabai attitude, which is more relaxed, which is good for people like me who are high strung. The other thing you may want to consider here is how you're going to make your income. If you're planning on moving here and you're wanting to get a job somewhere, be prepared to make a Thai wage so you might want to research online whatever it is you're wanting to do find out what it pays and then maybe watch one of our videos of the cost of living at thailand and see if that's going to be enough money for for you one of the things where or one of the situations where thailand really shines is for retirees that are making a pension because their pension will go a long way here another thing that would shine here is if you're, you can work remotely, so you're working on your computer here in Thailand, but you're working for a company either in Europe, United States, some other country where they're paying you a wage that's in your country. In other words, if I was working online for a company in the U.S. and they're paying me U.S. wages, those wages will go a long way here. But if you're depending on coming here and getting here a job in Thailand, just know that the pay not, may not be what you're expecting it to be, or maybe it is what you expect it to be, but make sure your lifestyle is going to be suitable for you with that amount of money here. Also keep in mind when working here that foreigners, the jobs are protected here. There's a lot of jobs that you're going to try to get here that they just won't let foreigners have. They won't even, they won't even consider you. So just keep that in mind too. You really want to have this research thoroughly if you're planning on getting a job here in Thailand. If any of this information is helpful to you, we really would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel because we concentrate on Thailand, all things Thailand, and then we do have a focus here in Chiang Mai, which is Northern Thailand. But we try to bring you tips, tricks, anything we can possibly give you from what we've learned in the past two years on our channel. So please subscribe. If you feel so inclined, buy us a coffee. We'd really appreciate it. Also, there's a thanks button below if you feel like donating there. And we also have Patreon if you want to donate to the channel monthly. And we will try to bring you behind the scenes and different things uh, on the Patreon uh, platform as well. We really appreciate you watching the video. Well, that's all I have for you now. Again, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm going to say thank you in Thai, which is Kap Kun Kap.